Hey everybody, I've got a whole bunch of fun stuff to unbox, and we're going to do it right now on Eric's Trains. Alright, so I've got seven boxes to open up today, and some of these boxes contain multiple items. So I've got this big box from Atlas, then I've got a smaller box from Atlas, then I've got these three items from Lionel, and then I've got these two boxes of stuff that I bought on eBay. Yeah, that's a lot of stuff, so let's see what's arrived. Alright, so for today's unboxings from my knife collection, we'll be using this knife. This is a Revo Journey. Kind of a cool looking fixed blade knife. There it is. Now, I already know what's in most of these boxes, and I know the best thing is in the large Atlas box. So we'll start with some of the smaller boxes and work our way up to the grand finale of what's in that big Atlas box. Alright, so we'll start off with this smaller box from Atlas. This has some O-scale stuff, but it's small O-scale stuff. That's your only hint. Alright, so first up we've got some of these O-scale cars that Atlas is putting out. Well, they're 143, so they're not perfect American O-scale, but they're close enough. So this is a Volkswagen Beetle, obviously. And I think there's another one in here yet. This is a BMW X5. Pretty cool. Now, as you can see, obviously these aren't made by Atlas but they're being sold through Atlas. And I'm always looking to have more cars on my layout, so anytime I can get some nice O-scale cars, I'm all about it. So we'll open up those in a moment. And then we got one more thing, and this is pretty cool. It's an O-scale, or close to O-scale, piece of construction equipment. And there it is. This is pretty cool. So this is one of those Volvo high load wheel lifters that they use to lift big logs and trees and stuff like that. So it's 1 50th scale, which is slightly smaller than American O scale, but it's close enough. And then right here it says freewheeling die cast metal and plastic vehicle imported by Atlas Model Railroad. Looks like we gotta undo some screws. I think. Yeah. I'm gonna add this to my screw bin that I have down here. I've got a little bin of just random screws, and they come in useful all the time for random stuff. Same with this screw. Don't throw those things out. And there it is. So the body is die cast metal. The wheels are plastic and this thing is plastic. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's pretty neat. So a good place to put this is somewhere on your layout where they're doing construction work or maybe tearing down some trees or something like that. Very cool. Nicely detailed. I like it. Pick up some big logs with this thing. Very nice. Alright, let's check out those cars. Ages 14 plus. We got more screws. I think it's funny how they have these things screwed into cardboard. Okay, there's the BMW X5. Very nice. Now again, this is 1 50th scale, which is slightly smaller than American O scale. American O scale is 148. This is 143, which is slightly larger than American O scale, but again, 
it's close enough. And I believe 143 is European O scale, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it looks great. The doors don't open or anything like that, but I don't care. I'm just going to stick this somewhere on the layout to add some more realism. And then we've got the Volkswagen Beetle. And I only got two of these. They have about, oh, maybe 20 or 25 models you can choose from. All different types of cars. Actually, it looks really nice. And again, these aren't made by Atlas. They're sold through Atlas. But you can find them on their site by looking at their current catalog. These are great. All right, next I've got some new pieces of rolling stock that have arrived from Lionel. So first we've got a new caboose. So this is a Chicago Northwestern NE5 caboose, number 606. LED interior lighting, die cast trucks and operating couplers, 027 minimum curve. And I think this is probably one of the new items that's made in Vietnam. Yeah, made in Vietnam. In fact, all three of these might be made in Vietnam. We'll see. And there we go. I didn't have a Chicago Northwestern caboose in my fleet, so that's why I got this one. And it looks nice. It's not super fancy. You know, it's not one of the more expensive cabooses that Lionel makes. But it's alright. Die-cast metal trucks. Interior LED lighting. Not bad. Couplers work. Very nice. Alright, next we've got a boxcar, Golden West Service. So let's see what the box tag says. Golden West Beer Car, number 149000, die cash trucks, operating couplers, and 036 minimum curve. And just like the caboose, this one's made in Vietnam as well. A lot of Lionel's rolling stock these days is being made in Vietnam. Now, from what I understand, the Factories in Vietnam are still owned by the same companies that have factories in China. They just have some factories across the border in Vietnam to save on manufacturing costs and also save on taxes and tariffs, stuff like that. So there it is. The doors don't open. But it's very nicely done. It's a great paint job. Nice brake wheel. Yeah. Die cast metal trucks, die cast metal couplers. Now these are those newer trucks that have the plastic bolsters on the trucks, but the exterior is die cast metal. And they're sprung as well. So yeah. I like it. By the way, here in the box are the mounting pads if you want to swap out the O-gauge couplers with scale couplers like KD couplers. This is what you do it with. Alright, lastly we've got a really big piece of rolling stock. This is a gondola, a Conrail gondola. So, let's see here. Conrail 65 foot mill gondola number 55646. Die cast trucks with rotating bearing caps. Very cool. Operating couplers with hidden uncoupling tabs and an 036 minimum curve. This thing is absolutely massive. And I got this one because it's kind of a patch paint job. Which I think looks more realistic. <laughs> there it is. This is very cool. I wonder where this one is made. Yeah, this one's made in Vietnam as well. Very nice. And yeah, it's, it's huge. 
I think this is the largest gondola I've ever seen, the longest gondola. This reminds me of those auto parts box cars that they came out with a few years ago. Just gigantic. But beautiful nonetheless. I like it. Have to put some junk up in this gondola, like some scrap metal or something. All right, next we've got the two items that I bought on the bay. So, we'll start with this one first. And this is a couple pieces of Weaver rolling stock. So here's the first one. Say Milwaukee Road boxcar. And I'm a big fan of the old Weaver pieces of rolling stock because they're well made, they're very nice, but they're not super expensive. And so, you know, in a given year, I usually buy maybe six or seven pieces off of eBay just because it's a nice way to bulk up your fleet with some beautiful colorful cars without spending a ton of money. Now some of the cars are more expensive. Some of the Weaver cars are more expensive. Uh, I don't know why. I guess if the seller thinks that the paint scheme is something that's going to fetch more money he'll mark it up a little bit but you can find these things for usually around 40 or 50 bucks and they'll go all the way up to maybe a hundred bucks depending on the car but I like to keep my eye out and if I see something that's good at a reasonable price I'll snag it and I think this one cost me about forty dollars forty five dollars something like that it's brand new it's never been out of the box all right there we go there it is so as you can see, it looks great. Weaver always did an amazing job with their paints. They used a pad printing technique and their cars always looked fantastic. And I believe these had opening doors, yep. Very cool, but these earlier Weaver cars had two problems. Number one, they're very lightweight incredibly lightweight because it's all styrene plastic and then also they've got plastic trucks and couplers which doesn't help with the weight situation so they're incredibly light but as you can see they look amazing and so what I usually do is I get these for a reasonable price and then I'll take them upstairs and add some weights to the inside to make them a little heavier and then I'll usually weather them just to add a little more realism to them and they end up looking fantastic. I love Weaver rolling stock and it was really sad that they went out of business. They closed in 2014 and I think half their tooling, the American tooling went to Lionel and became the Lion Scale product line and then their overseas tooling went to Atlas and then Atlas started putting out some of their products like the troop sleeper car and the hospital car and stuff like that but yeah. All right, and this next one is also a piece of Weaver rolling stock. I believe this is a reefer. If I'm remembering correctly. Yeah. Woo, look at all those packing peanuts. Yeah, this is one of those ones that was made for Peterson Supply Company. So a swift silver leaf wood reefer. Wood sided refrigerator car. I hate packing peanuts. And there it is. And as you can see, once again, it looks fantastic. The paint job is absolutely flawless. Now this is one of the later pieces of rolling stock from Weaver because it has the die cast trucks and couplers which does help the weight a little bit but it's still pretty darn light and so I'll still add some weights to this to bring it up to around 14-15 ounces and at that weight it'll run a lot smoother on my layout. And then I'll probably weather this as well while I'm at it. But yeah, looks great. All right, now we're on to the grand finale, the Big Atlas box. And there's two items in here. One is a piece of rolling stock. 
The other is a piece of motive power. So it's the one locomotive that we're unboxing today. I've got all these packing peanuts, so I'm gonna bring this down to the floor and I'll bring the boxes up. All right, so we got a piece of rolling stock and a locomotive. So first, the rolling stock. This is an Atlas O Premier Two Bay Offset Hopper, Norfolk and Western, number 180733. There it is. I like the new box that Atlas has been using with the honeycomb pattern. Looks really cool. And this looks like an XMTH model because it's got those little MTH paper things on the couplers. And yeah, this is XMTH. It's got a nice little coal load. <laughs> if I can get it in there. There we go. And I can tell it's XMTH because of those coupler covers and also on the bottom it's got the MTH inspection sticker and they've also got MTH stamped into the trucks and then they've simply got Atlas O stamped over it in white paint. So these are made in the same factory that MTH used. They're just made for Atlas now and branded for Atlas. But they still very much have the spirit of MTH in them. Sounds like an MTH truck when you uncouple it. It's so nice to see Atlas doing a fantastic job of carrying on with some of these MTH models. And speaking of XMTH models, let's get to the locomotive. So this is the first XMTH locomotive that Atlas has released. And many of you probably already know what it is, but for those of you who don't, it is the XMTH 44 ton switcher. Atlas OGE 44 tonner locomotive, Santa Fe number 463. The model number is 301-38004. Now I have a Southern MTH 44 tonner that I bought several years ago when MTH made it. So this will be my second of these 44 tonners. Got some spare traction tires here. Got nice Atlas O ribbons. There those are. Very cool. Now, you gotta be careful with these 44 tonners because they have really delicate handrails, if I recall correctly. She is. Yeah, look at that. It's fantastic. All die cast metal, very heavy. Oh, it looks like these windows have fallen inside the cab. I'm going to have to fix that. That is easily fixable with a little CA glue. Probably during shipping, it got jarred and that little window piece just fell inside. So I'll just have to open this up and get that window piece. It's a single window piece and it goes across the back here and with some CA glue it'll be good as new. Not a big deal at all. Very nice. Yeah this thing has got a great weight to it. Let's see how much it weighs. Two pounds 13.6 ounces. That's a lot for such a small locomotive. I mean here's my hand for a size comparison. This thing's maybe seven or eight inches long. All right, fast forward about 25 or 30 minutes from the last scene. I went ahead and opened this thing up and was able to put that rear window piece back in place so everything is good as new at this point. And again, I know some people are going to get bent out of shape about something like that, but to me, it's really not that big of a deal. These things go on such a journey to get from China to your front door, and 
honestly, it's amazing more things don't get jarred loose than they do. So when something gets jarred loose like a window, you just put it back in place and move on. It's not a big deal. Now, I did have footage of me doing the repair, but it was, you know, 25, 30 minutes long. And if I had put it in this video, it would have taken things in a whole nother direction. So I left that footage out. However, while I had it open, I was able to shoot some footage of what's inside. And here it is. And the cool thing is that as small as this little switcher is, it has two motors. That is such an MTH thing. I mean, this thing is tiny. You're never going to haul a whole bunch of cars with this thing. And yet MTH went to the trouble of putting two motors in this tiny little switcher. That, again, is such an MTH thing. And because Atlas is basically having it made the same way as it was made with MTH, Atlas has the two motors in there as well. That is really cool to see. Now, a couple things. Number one, the sound system in this thing remarkably is pretty good. Even though it's small, it has pretty good sound as you'll hear in just a minute. And the other thing is, as you saw on the inside, there was no room for a smoke unit. So you're not gonna have any smoke coming out of the smokestacks or anything like that, no big deal. And just as a reminder, even though these things are being made by Atlas now, they still have the same ProtoSound 3 system that they had when they were being made by MTH. So you can still run them with the MTH digital command system, just like you always did. All right, now comes the fun part. We're gonna go ahead and start up the 44 tonner and run it around the layout for a minute. I've got some freight cars behind this thing, but because of the nature of the types of cars that arrive today, it's gonna be kind of a weird mix of old and new, but it'll be okay.
plug in the battery charger and the uh, block heaters. All right, so I hope you enjoyed this look at the new Atlas XMTH 44 tonner. Atlas has done a fantastic job with this thing, and it's just as good as it ever was when MTH was making it. If you'd like to pick one of these up, the retail price is right at $450, and they're available in a variety of different road names. I think they actually have some of these in stock on the Atlas website right now at shop.atlasrr.com, or you can contact your favorite Atlas dealer for more info. And then as far as the other stuff you saw me unbox, well, for the Atlas rolling stock, you can go to the same place, shop.atlasrr.com, or contact your favorite Atlas dealer. And then for the Lionel rolling stock, you can go to lionel.com, or contact your favorite Lionel dealer. And then for the stuff I found on eBay, you can go to ebay.com. They paid me to say that. No, I'm just kidding. They didn't pay me to say that, although it would be pretty neat if they did. If you'd like to support this channel, I would greatly appreciate it. That can be done through Patreon at patreon.com slash ericstrains. Patreon supporters get access to all sorts of perks and benefits, and you can read about those benefits on my Patreon page. I'd like to put a big thank you out there to all of my current Patreon supporters. Your support means the world not only to me but to the future of this channel and finally if you'd like to buy an Eric Strains t-shirt or anything else I might be selling check out the Eric Strains online store at ericstrains.com slash store anyway that's it for now I'm Eric Siegel thanks for watching and I'll see you next time